Thy will be done. Teaching the Talmudi Israelite faith through the words of the Our Father by Shmuel ben Naftali. Please visit our website at www.talmudi.co.il Chapter 2 The Ancient Community of the Way and the Talmudi Israelite View of the Second Temple Period Section 1 Introduction It is well known that the earliest Jewish followers of Yeshua did not accept the authority or teachings of Paul of Tarsus, or St. Paul. As a result, their beliefs were very different from what is now considered standard Christian theology. They did not accept the virgin birth, original sin, the Trinity, or that Yeshua died to save us from our sins. I spent a long while engaged in some serious soul-searching, debating at what point, and even if, to spend time explaining basic Israelite theology, the very environment that produced people like Yeshua, or Jesus, Yochanan the Immerser, or John the Baptist, and Jacob the Pious, or James the Just. In the end, I felt that it was not good enough for people to read this book with preconceived ideas. Jews and Christians may often use the same vocabulary, but the individual words we use frequently have completely different meanings. If I were to present this book with no theological background to the ideas I am expounding, I would not achieve my goal of telling you, my listener, about some very important and pretty amazing biblical concepts. For too long, we have only had one of two choices, either the Trinitarian Christian view or the Talmudic Rabbinic view of history. The biblical Yahwist view never got a look in. There are few, if any, champions of the Yahwist view of history. I came to the conclusion that it was essential to build up a picture for you of the Yahwist Israelite understanding of the late Second Temple period of Jewish history. Doing so opens up the bigger picture. Most people with a traditional Christian background can only see Yeshua. Most people focus on that one life as if nothing else of any relevance or importance was going on at the time, as if the world around him had no impact on the content of his words. He is portrayed in the New Testament as being totally disconnected from the historical and theological world in which he and his followers lived. If we are willing to give the Yahwist view of history a fair hearing, then such an undertaking will open the lens wider than merely focusing on Yeshua. We will begin to see that his sayings were often a response to the actions and belief systems of other Jewish sects and groups, and that he was very much a man of his time. We will ultimately realise that he was just a small part in what Yahweh our God was trying to achieve, a small but captivating brushstroke in the greater portrait of human history. Therefore, before we even begin to examine the great prayer to our Father that Yeshua produced, I want to examine the Yahwist theological process that produced Yeshua the Jew. Reading this section will help you, the listener, understand many of the images and concepts that I allude to in the rest of this book. In this chapter, I will cover 1. The purpose of the Israelite religion 2. The glory of God 3. 
God's holiness. 4. The fire of Yahweh. 5. The trembling of heaven and earth. 6. Misfortune and blamelessness. 7. The endurance of the righteous. 8. The great and terrible day of Yahweh. 9. Repentance. 10. What a prophet is for. 11. The prophet like Elijah. 12. The place of Yeshua in the overall scheme. 13. The ancient community of the way. 14. Jacob the pious, or James, St. James the just. 15. The convention of Jerusalem. And 16. Shimon Bar Clovas.